Last week I attended a seminar about learning how to do great, terrific retreats in Yantville. I left early in the morning, drove for two hours, had attended the retreat the entire day, and while I was going home, while it was getting dark and pouring rain, like literally pouring rain, it was like, oh man, it's going to be a long drive home. I am so tired. I'm sure you've experienced that yourself before. Driving, everything seemed fine on the highway of the 29th, and then all of a sudden there was that sign, that sign that I did not want to see. It said Napa which meant I had gone the wrong direction. Has that happened to you before? Well, it happened to me that day and I was not excited about it. So what I did, I ended up finding the first exit possible to get on the other side and to be able to go the right direction. And while I got on the right direction, it felt like I was going north, I was going right. Today, I wanna to talk to you about going the wrong direction with your relationship with Jesus. Has that happened to you before? How much time do you spend with Jesus today? What are the obstacles that you have put in your relationship between you and between Jesus? Do you feel there is a void in your life? You're no longer at peace. Your joy has vanished. Busyness is more important as actually focusing on Jesus. He's usually last in your life instead of first. And there are so many things, so many ways that we ended up walking away from God. And even if we think that God is distant from us, it is actually you, it's me that is pushing him away and walking away. So what is it that you can turn it around in today is what we're going to talk about. What are the solutions for you to draw close to him and to say, this is what I need to do. I want to get back to my hero, to Jesus, who wants the best for me. Jesus actually addresses that in the Bible and he talks about that and he gives us the solutions in how to not be lukewarm, but to actually be hot, preferably or cold. The best would be actually to be hot, of course, to be really on fire for what Jesus has done. So today I'm gonna to give you those solutions that Jesus talked about in the book of Revelation. And he first addresses there is a problem because so often when you and I are starting to that drifting away, that walking away, you don't even know that you're actually not close to Jesus anymore. But the question that would come to mind is, how much do you pray today? How much do you read your Bible? Do you attend to church? Do you connect with God on a regular basis? Do you feel distanced from God or close by? When you go to church, is everything you see somebody else's fault? Do you see needs around you that are not being addressed? Those are some tests that you could say, if all those were negative, those answers, I'm actually not close in my relationship to God anymore. Jesus wants to give you a U-turn. And he talks in Revelations 3, right about that. Why don't we read that? It starts to the message to the Laodicea. And it says, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, I write. And here is Jesus that's actually talking. He says, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says this. Let's stop there for a moment. The first thing that he says, he's giving himself credibility of whom he is. The very worst, he's, first words he says is, I am the amen. I am it. I am the so be it. This is truth. This is fact. I am here. It's me. Remember me? Remember what I've done for you in the past? And then he says, the amen, the faithful and the true witness. Jesus never walks away, never wanders away, never distances himself from you. But he is faithful. He connects with you. And then he says, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Jesus was there from the beginning. He is the true witness that died for the mistakes you have made, that rose from the dead, which we so easily forget sometime while we move on in life. And he made the creation. And he says, I know, I am it. Remember me? Hi, I want to connect with you. And he does. He gives his own credibility. He tells you who he is, whom he is the son of God. And then it continues. And it says, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, 
and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Let's focus that on a moment. <laughs> Do you see all these points that Jesus noticed about the church of Laodicea? This was a group that, that was had an incredible town. It actually was a town that was not protected from the enemy. And they were used to compromise with the enemy to be able to survive. It was a wealthy town. It would be the banking city for all the areas in the region around them. They actually had built a 30,000 seat M5 theater right there in the midst of them. And that was rich, that was wealthy. So they were, had a ton of money and they could do a lot with that. They were doing really well. There was not enough water for them. So they brought the water in with some kind of channels and pipes. And while it arrived from Herapolis into this city, it arrived look warm. And Jesus talks to them. He says, I know your deeds. You are lukewarm. He talked their language because they knew that lukewarm water was no good. Water is refreshing when it's cold and it's great when it's hot to do things with. But when it's actually lukewarm, there is not much people want to do with the water. And here Jesus addresses that and says, it is lukewarm. You are lukewarm. And my question to you right now is, where are you in your faith? Are you lukewarm? You're neither hot, you're not cold. You don't get excited about what God is doing in your life. You don't even notice it anymore. You kind of have removed yourself from all that. It's not important to really be socializing or get involved with the people of God or with Christians any longer. Those are all things that will actually have you drift away. And then Jesus actually points out specifically what the problem is, why they have become lukewarm. Why don't we check on them again? He says, you're neither cold nor hot. It's not really a big deal anymore. You're not in love with me anymore. You don't live anymore for what I have done for you. And then it continues. He says, because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. The first problem, there's nothing wrong by being rich. But when you have no need for God anymore and your wealth becomes what is most important to you, that becomes a problem. Because instead of depending on God, what He wants you to do, how He wants to help you and work through you, he start, you start become depending on you, yourself. You have no need for Him anymore. So why bother with them? That's a huge issue. Can you imagine saying to your father or mother, I have no need for you anymore. <laughs> You're not important to me. That's kind of that lukewarm we're talking about right here. He says, you have no need for me. That is a big deal. Then it goes on. He says, you need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched. When you make material more important than Jesus, when you make anything in your life the center of your heart that is more important and that God no longer is important in your life, you become a wretched person. Because the center of your heart is anything but. Can you imagine right now actually driving in a car and having Jesus sitting right next to you? Would your life be different? Would you drive that two-hour drive differently as you usually would? Would you kind of not speed, not talk on the phone, you know, all, all that little stuff and actually start building a relationship with Jesus and connecting with Him? And it's, He says, the one from Laodicea, they were wretched. Jesus was no longer in their heart. They had moved on. He says, you're miserable. You're miserable because you cannot see. You don't even know it. What you're focusing on is your pain, your hurt, your frustration, re your rejection, all these things that get in the way when we take your eyes, when I take my eyes, when you take your eyes of Jesus, there is something that changes and it makes you miserable. You no longer have peace. You no longer have joy. You no longer have that first love. You no longer want to tend to the needs of others. You no longer want to reach out to make a difference. You become miserable. And he says, you're poor. You're poor in your spirituality. You don't stand out anymore. What attracted you to me to begin with is no longer there. You have removed yourself. You have walked away from me. And there is that shining light is gone. That twinkle in your eye. All of that is missing. And he says, you're blind. You're completely blind. I'm like, wow, there is a list here, isn't there? You're blind. You're no longer to see the needs around you. And you're no longer to see me, Jesus, Jesus himself working in your life. 
That happens so often to us, doesn't it? There are those moments that you get so busy, you don't even see Jesus anymore. I remember a friend of mine that had gotten hit with a lot of bad stuff. And while she came to Denver and had not even a clue in what to do next, and while she's out there, she doesn't even have the money or the way to get with her children, with her three children of 7, 9, and 12, to move to the next airport or how to get there. And there was this wonderful young woman that walked up to her. She says, I see you have those huge needs. You have those huge needs. Why don't I help you right now? Let me treat you all to lunch. And they did, and it was a huge answer and a huge help. But afterwards, instead of recognizing that Jesus had provided through this woman and provided their meal for all four of them, she actually was very bitter and angry for everything that went wrong in their life. When you don't see the needs anymore, when you become so blinded for what is happening in your own life, you're no longer able to see what God is doing in your life. And that's bad because that is rough because the more you don't see, the more you walk away. So what is the answer? What is the turn? Well, we get to there in a moment. But there is one more thing that Jesus is saying. We've talked about wretched, needing nothing, miserable, poor, blind. And then we have, Jesus says, you're naked. Now, I don't know about you, but if you ever stood in front of the mirror and, and you look at yourself naked, and it's just not the most prettiest picture. You want to cover it up. You want to put things away. But Jesus says, you are naked, church of Laodicea, because you have changed so much that all those around you can see what is wrong in your life, but you will do nothing about it. They don't see Jesus. They don't see love. They don't see hope. They don't see restoration. They don't see refreshment, but they see a lot of ugly things that should not be there. And because of that, instead of attracting people to God and to what he has given them, you actually push them away from it. That was Jesus' opening. He says, but I have a solution. I want to give you a second chance. You can make a U-turn. How do you do that? Well, he answers that in the Bible. And he says in Revelations 4, starting at verse 18, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed and eye salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. The first part Jesus tells you to do is kind of, something I didn't quite expect. And he said, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich. What does he mean by that? Before I do that, before I give you the answer to that, we will be right back. I'm so glad you're part of us today and I just want you to know that God believes in you. God has purpose for your life. God wants you to have the way he created life. It says in John 10:10, 10, 10, I came that you have life and that you have it abundantly. That abundant life is what God wants to give you today. I encourage you call us, connect with us so we can be there to encourage you. Our number is 855-836-1100. God does not want to leave you where you're at, but he wants to give you a bigger, brighter future. Not so much just out there, but right in here. Know that God loves you, and so do I. Contact us, barbtv.org. Have a great day. Barb Marshall has been doing this for quite some time now, and her interviews are, are rock solid, and um, the people are exciting and uh, informative, and. There's a lot on her website to see. Love Your Life Ministries started small and it's just grown and gotten bigger and bigger with uh, different things that, she, that Barb does to uh, make sure that the Word of God gets out to people. Lots of different folks of all ages have tuned in to her website and then into her programs of interviews, uh, knowing that there's somewhere, someone who can benefit from reading or hearing or seeing what's happening. Um, I'm grateful that she's in our world at this day and this time. God has brought her to this moment in, in his space and time to minister and to uh, be effective in helping others find the joy of living 
and to love our lives. We're talking about gold being refined, about taking a U-turn, about straying away so far from God that you don't really know how to make that U-turn. And do you know that God wants to give you a second chance? He wants you to turn around. And we've talked about everything that was not right with the Church of the La La Laodiceans. But now Jesus is giving you the solution in what you need to do to turn around to make a difference in that. And this is what it says. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be become rich. That's the first part. Let's start there for a moment. He says, gold refined. When gold is made into liquid, when it's made refined, when all the impurities are removed and it's taken away, it becomes beautiful to the point that when you look in it, it shines so brightly that you will be able to see your own reflection in it. And Jesus is saying, the more you start sacrificing, buying, when the more you start sacrificing and giving of yourself and allowing me to come into your life and to turn that around, the more I can be there for you, the more you allow me to help you. When you sacrifice things that you know that should be right and not compromised, when you start getting on the right road, when you start not compromising anything, that is when gold is refined and becomes beautiful. You're like gold to me, Jesus says. You're that important. Are you willing to sacrifice for me the changes you need to make to be able to get on the right road? What sacrifices that you need to make right now? Reading your Bible, praying, helping in needs of other people, turning to build a relationship with Jesus instead of just putting him on the side road. There's something I like to do for you. And that's something I learned out of a book I did not too long ago, which is called Not a Fan. Actually, it's kind of hard to share this example for you because it was a little bit embarrassing. But here I was sitting without makeup, without my hair done, in an old ugly robe on the couch super early in the morning. And I'm sitting on the couch there and I'm reading my little Not a Fan daily devotional. And one of the things that's said in there, it says, pretend Jesus is sitting right next to you right now and have a conversation. And I was like, huh? And I was like, okay, I can do that because I pray to Jesus all the time. So instantly I straightened up, pulled my hair a little better, was trying to hide the face, what it looks like without makeup and all that stuff and started talking to have a conversation with Jesus. And I tell you, it was awesome. It was fresh. It was new. Because instead of talking to Jesus, I was talking with Jesus. Is that something you can do? Are you willing to sacrifice some of your time to do that? And I can guarantee you when you do that, you start refreshing, restoring, renewing, and reviving your relationship with Jesus. He says, are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to buy gold? The second point Jesus made was this, and he says, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and, and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. What is meant by that? What it's saying here, but in those areas, they had a lot of black sheep. And these black sheep had black wool, wool, which was very, very unique and beautiful. And they made the most incredible garments there. And a lot of people would be walking in this dark clothing. And it was beautiful clothing, nothing wrong with it. But Jesus said, I want you pure. I want to make your clothing white. I want you to shine. Put on my grace. Put on my righteousness. Start living for me. Get rid of the filth that you're in right now, the dirt that is in your heart, and remove all of that. And when you remove that, when you turn close to me, when you really walk towards me, and you take away adultery, when you take away lying, when you take away stealing, when you build a relationship with me, when you remove all that filth that is in the way right now, that is the moment, that is the moment that you no longer will feel naked. Why? Because you shine in such a way, you make such a difference that everybody will notice. Have you noticed ever a person really on fire for God? 
aren't you attracted to that person that you kind of want to be part of that? That's what God's telling you to you right now. He says, be willing to sacrifice, make a U-turn. Be willing to clothe yourself in righteousness instead of dirt, make a U-turn. And then he says more than that. And he says it will cover that nakedness. It will remove that away. And then next he says here, he says, and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And, and I salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. The eye salve in the city of Laodicea was known well because they had an eye salve that was used as medication for all kinds of eye problems that brought healing to the people. And here he says right to you, he says, and I salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. When you start seeing what's wrong in your own life and what needs to be cleaned up in your own heart instead of only everybody else's and you acknowledge the changes that you need to make, that is the beginning that the speck is moved out of your own eye and you're able to see and help other people. So are you willing to do that? Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to become righteous? and to say, God, forgive the mistakes I've made, clean my heart, bring grace, bring love, bring joy back into me and help me live life, love life to the fullest, completely. Restore me, renew me, refresh me, revive me. And then he says something amazing. Because at that point you're like, oh shoot, I've been on the wrong road, I've made mistakes, now what? And that's the moment Jesus does something really, really, really cool. Like he was sitting with me on that couch and I know he was there. It was just amazing. God is such an amazing God. Jesus sat there and it says in verse 19 the following. He says, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. That's like a coach, guys. It's like a coach. A coach will never leave you where you're at. Will never allow you just to continue over and over and over over to, to let you go on the wrong road, in the wrong direction, wasting all that time. But he says this, and he says it beautifully. He says, I will reprove you and I will discipline you. Why? To make you better and to draw you closer to me. And he says, here, I will reprove you, I help you. And this is what I am doing with you. I says, this is what I wanna do. I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and I will dine with him and he with me. Jesus is not kicking your door down. Jesus is not throwing your door away in the door of your heart. He is not removing all the rubbish right now, but he's saying, I'm knocking. And the door handle is on the inside. Will you let me in? And if you let me in, because I am knocking on the door of your heart. I am knocking. I want to help you. I'm going to guide you. I want to teach you. And are you willing to open that door of your heart? And if you open the door of your heart and allow Jesus to come in, guess what happens? He says, I'm going to have a meal with you. Intimate fellowship time. Why? To build a close relationship to help you to stay on the right road. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. And then you can arrive at your destination. Because Jesus says if you do that, your destination is this. He who overcomes... I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. When you make a U-turn and accept God's second chance for your life, what is it that you get? You get the right destination. You get fellowship with God and your destiny your end destination will be with God, with Jesus on his throne. Are you willing to say, I need to turn around to make a difference, to open that door in your life? If you do that, I would love to hear from you. It is as simple as saying, ask Jesus to come in your heart. Believe that he died and sacrificed for you, his life on the cross. And know, know that he wants to revive you and restore you because he rose on the third day. Why? To give you a chance and a second chance. 
Are you willing to say that prayer? Let's pray that right now. Dear Jesus, I want to make a U-turn. Help me to turn around. Help me to live for you and to shine. I want to sacrifice and change the changes I need to make. I want to put on pure clothing and put on righteousness. Take the dirt. Forgive me for the mistakes that I have made. I want to have clean eyes. I want to be able to see clearly what that world is out there, what I've become, and what you want to make me. Heal me. I am opening the door of my heart. Will you sit with me and eat with me? Amen. If you just did that, God is saying, I love you. I want to have a big banquet with you, and I want to celebrate. I would love to hear from you to talk about that decision. It's 855-836-1100. I want to help you to see how you can be on the right road with Jesus. This, these weren't my words today. This is what Jesus was telling to a lukewarm church. He wants you hot. He wants you excited. He wants you shining. Jesus loves you so much. He is never going to allow you to keep going to the road, wrong roads over and over again. He wants to remove the obstacles and help you to turn around. And it will never be too late for you, no matter what you've done. Call us, 855-836-1100 or go to barbtv.org. Love Your Life Ministries has been created for people to love their lives and, and we're so excited to really share with you how you could love your life and what it is that you could do to improve your life and your relationship with God. We believe in the Bible, we believe every single word of it from the beginning from creation all the way to the end of Revelation. We believe in you that you can learn instead of to survive in life to thrive in Christ and we look forward to connect with you and to help you in this. Contact us, 855-836-1100 or go to barbtv.org or Love Your Life Ministries. Just know that God believes in you so much. He does not want you to stay where you're at, but He wants to help you to have an abundant life.